And joining us now is Republican Mike Hoffman. Nice to see you. Welcome to 7 News. Oh, good to be here. Uh, thanks for having me. Our pleasure. Let's start by talking about your district in particular. Sure. As you know, it's not so conservative anymore since you, since you were first voted in office. There are a lot of Democratic voters, and of course in Colorado we have a number of independents. And you have to appeal to all of them. My question for you is this. To a woman who is fiscally conservative, sure. yet socially progressive and pro-choice, mm -hmm. Why should she have comfort in voting in you? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm certainly pro-life, and, and I'm proud of my record there. I do believe that there ought to be exceptions uh, in terms of uh, striking uh, the appropriate balance. Uh, but I've uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, fought uh, for the interests of women in terms of making sure that we, uh, in the scourge of sexual assaults uh, that, that plagued our military, uh, and stood up uh, against my party's leadership to support the violence against uh, women Act, and, and, and when I was in state government, uh, uh, worked to prohibit insurance companies from discriminating uh, against women on the basis of gender. But your, your stance, particularly on the abortion issue, though, has, has softened over the years. Well, I, I think that there ought to be a balance, and I, th and I think uh, uh, there ought to be exceptions. Let's talk about, again, the diversity of your district. Um, you have to appeal to a broad, a broad base of voters. Tell me, in the past year, a vote where you have gone against the party leadership, where you have defied your party. Well, uh, certainly uh, uh, the Violence Against Women Act uh, th that, I, that I mentioned to you. And, and then I believe, a as someone who served in both the Army and the Marine Corps, combined 21 years of military experience, the only member of Congress to serve in both Iraq wars, that we can make cuts to the defense budget without compromising national security. And I do break with the Republicans on that because I, I've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Pentagon over cutting uh, wasteful spending. Let's talk about the military because you sure. bring a very unique perspective uh, to, to, to Congress. Right now, there are air attacks against ISIS. Sure. Um, two questions. One, do you think that the U.S. response thus far has been appropriate or should it have been sooner? Well, I, number one, it should have, well, should have been sooner. Uh, obviously, the, I think the president uh, wanted all U.S. forces out of, of Iraq in 2011 without leaving some small residual presence. Uh, we lost uh, our military military relationship. Uh, we lost our influence on the Iraqi government. Uh, the roots simply weren't uh, deep enough, and it created an opening for ISIS to come in there. And so uh, I think at the end of the day, though, there's got to, it's, it's a political accommodation. I worked in the western Euphrates River Valley uh, with the Iraqi people, and uh, we need to to put pressure on the government uh, to bridge that, that divide between the uh, Iraqi Shia and Sunni. Political negotiation aside, you've been on the sure. ground, you know the landscape. Does this call for boots on the ground, a more aggressive U.S. ground force than is already taking place? It's not popular, but is that necessary? Well, it, certainly more than what the president's saying. When the president says no boots on the ground, as an infantry officer, uh, from the Marine Corps, I would say that no boots on the ground is that, is that maneuver element, that, that force on the ground. I don't see the U.S. Uh, doing that. Oh, I, I see those as indigenous forces and are supporting them. But we do need to give air advisory logistical support to those indigenous forces on the ground. And that will involve having some forces forward, such as forward air controllers, uh, who have a visual on the target that can call in close air support effectively. Let's move on to some other topics. Sure. We are now the one-year anniversary of the government shutdown. Mm -hmm. Past votes aside, the American public is not thrilled about what happened and is still sure. not thrilled what happened. Why should a voter have confidence in you as an incumbent mm -hmm. that could not, in a body that could not agree on the most divisive of issues, to go back to Washington and not have this happen again? Well, certainly Washington has a spending problem, and and there, there was a breakdown in terms between the House and the Senate uh, over a spending issue. Obamacare, which certainly ha have has increased spending. I, I uh, fault both parties. Uh, for not coming to an agreement. And, then, and when I saw that there weren't negotiations, I certainly spoke out uh, against that and, and voted in the shutdown. With that said, things did fail. So why should you deserve another chance to come back when, when others in districts across the country are saying this is a time for new faces and new blood who will get along? Well, a couple of things. Number one, I'm uh, a part of a, a small group. Right now, we hope to expand it 
called No Labels, Republicans and Democrats that want to bridge the partisan divide in Washington, D.C., that, that have come together to do that. Again, uh, we're still a small group, but, but I hope that that group uh, grows. And secondly, uh, uh, to protect the military and to protect military families from the shutdown, I authored legislation uh, that was signed into law prior to the partial shutdown by the president uh, to exempt the military and, and military families from any impact of the shutdown. Should Obamacare be repealed? Because uh, just today there have been discussions along that, along that line. It, it needs to be repealed and replaced. We don't even know what the full impact of Obamacare is yet because so much of it, the president is delayed until after this election. If it's so ugly that it has to be delayed until after the election, it's probably bad policy. And the out-of-pocket costs under Obamacare have skyrocketed. And, and I've talked to hospital executives locally here that are having more problems with collections under Obamacare than they did before. Very briefly, 30 seconds in our, in our discussion sure. here. Um, there's also been failure on, on agreement with, with immigration. Um, what is the plan that you would like to see introduced next session, first thing? Well, I think certainly we've got to uh, enforce our borders. We've got, we, uh, I'm sorry, secure our borders. We've got to be able to have enforceable laws, uh, have immigration uh, policies to grow the economy. And I do think we have to be compassionate in terms of keeping families together. And so I think there's got to be a middle path on immigration reform. I think both parties are at fault in not getting something done. And I believe we can do that. One minute left. We'll let you talk to the voters directly. Sure. Well, I'm, uh, again, uh, Mike Hoffman running for re-election to the Congress of the United States. I, I'm a, uh, a Marine Corps combat veteran, a former uh, small business leader. Uh, I've brought my experience uh, to the Armed Services uh, Committee uh, to make sure that we have a military that is strong. Uh, but at the same time, I've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Pentagon in, in uh, fighting against wasteful spending. As a veteran, uh, I've worked to make sure that our nation honors our obligations uh, to the men and women who have made tremendous sacrifices in defense of, uh, of our freedom. And as a 17-year-old, 17-year Colorado small business owner, uh, I bring that experience uh, to make sure that we uh, uh, cut that regulatory red tape that, that is choking our small businesses and, and hurting them from creating jobs and growing this economy. Congressman Mike Hoffman, thanks very much. Good to have you here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.